We're so glad you could be a part of our broadcast this morning. I'm Apostle Amos Robinson. And if you'd like to learn more about our ministry, you can go to our website at www.arms.arms.cc. Uh, if you'd like to share a, a tithe, an offering, a gift, a donation with the ministry, you can go to our website at arms.cc and click on the giving tab. Uh, if you'd like to come and visit one of our worship services, we have a worship service on Sunday at 1030s, at 1030 Eastern Time and 930 Central Time. We're so glad that you could be a part of our message this morning. God bless you. Our message is titled, The Power of Rest. Now we're going to be we're going to be uh, going through a series uh, on this. It's going to be a multi-part series, but the power of rest. You know, there's so much that goes on in our lives. It's so hectic, and we think of that especially, of course, at this time at Christmas time. There's a lot of things that go on, but you know, just in general, we can carry we can have a lot of balls in the air. We can have a lot of things going on. Maybe there might even be some insecurity going on in terms of you know, our relationship with God or how maybe things would turn out or things that maybe we're praying over, things that we're concerned over in our lives. And the Lord wants us to understand this morning that we can access the power of rest. We can have a lot of balls in the air. We can have a lot of responsibility. We can have a lot of things going on. Uh, we can have a lot of maybe, uh, maybe have some questions Maybe things are not as quite clear, or maybe the path is not as straight as we would like, but the Lord will make it straight. And the Lord wants us to lay into our hearts in this morning that there is power in resting in God and resting in Christ. There's power, and we want to learn more about that. And in this multi-part series, we're going to be unpacking that as the Holy Spirit would lead and guide us so that we can have um, of, of, of the uh, edification, the development in our spirit and the renewing of our mind to what's necessary so that we can access this power of rest. The text for our message comes out of Ephesians, the second chapter and the 19th verse. It comes out of Ephesians, the second chapter and the 19th verse. And it says, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus came to give us complete and full access to the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God is where we have our rest. In the kingdom of God is where we have our rest. Let's look here. Let's, let's expound the, the text around that. Uh, that Bible verse there, Ephesians 2.19. Well, let's go up to Ephesians 2.11. So uh, let's go look at Ephesians, the second chapter, and we'll look at the 11th verse. Ephesians, uh, the second chapter and the 11th verse. And it says, Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth are called uncircumcised by those who are called the circumcision which is done in the body by human hands. And we know how that tradition was handed down to the Jews. It was handed down through Abraham. Remember, Abraham, God had told him to circumcise all of those people in his household. Abraham was the first Jew. And so he laid that down tradition. As a matter of fact, uh, in the United States, we incorporate that as a tradition that the male child will be circumcised. It's a sign of our Judeo-Christian heritage. Let's go on to the 12th verse here of Ephesians 2. It says, Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise. Now he's talking to the Gentile community here. Without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you were who were once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. In other words, we realize that as, as a non-Jew that Christ came to bring us all together. In other words, the Jewish family and the Gentile family now could be one in Christ Jesus. He brought to bring that about so that this what? So that this the kingdom of God, so that which is the blessing of God will be available to the whole planet and, 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 and every creation he created. So let's look at the 14th verse. For he himself is our peace. Wow, that's very powerful. Talking about the power of rest, we realize that God himself or Christ himself or the Holy Spirit himself is our peace. In other words, it's ultimately 
it doesn't mean that we can be in very tumultuous situations or very tumultuous circumstances or very challenging situations or circumstances, but we can still have peace. It's possible to have peace in Christ because Christ is our peace. The Heavenly Father is our peace. Uh, the Holy Spirit is our peace. Amen. Who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, dividing the wall of hostility. 15th verse. By setting aside in his flesh the law which it commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of two. In other words, he's talking about bringing the Gentiles and the Jews together through Christ, thus making peace, and one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which we put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. In other words, there's neither Jew, there's neither Greek in Christ. We all become one. And we realize that we're no longer strangers, but we're fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. And as the household of God, do you think you're not going to be taken care of as a member of God's household? That should help to give you peace. And you can rest in that. You can rest in the fact that you are a part of of the household of God. I remember on the radio, I was listening to Christian radio just the other day, and by driving around, and there was a beautiful rendition of I am a child of God. And you know, just celebrating I am a child of God, that brings us peace and brings us rest. 20th verse, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And I'll be honest with you, as we prayed and we pondered about this series of what we would minister, there was a word of a Lord that came to us that we shared with our daughter. And that word was relax, ease into it. In other words, rest into it. And so out of that word of the Lord came now this series, the prompting for this series, The Power of Rest, part one. Let's look over here at Luke, the 12th chapter and the 22nd verse. Let's go over here to Luke, the 12th chapter and the 22nd verse. Luke, the 12th chapter and the 22nd verse. Luke, the 12th chapter and the 22nd verse. Luke, the 12th chapter, and the 22nd verse. Luke, Luke 12 and 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. You know, we as God's children, we shouldn't worry. In other words, we shouldn't take negative thoughts and meditate on them that are contrary to the promises of God and we shouldn't speak words that are contrary to the word of God. We have to speak truth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what your body, put about your body or what you will wear. 23rd verse, for life is more than food and the body more than clothes. 24th verse, consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spend. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow was thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all these things. And your father knows that you need them, but seek his kingdom. My dear brothers and sisters, our message title this morning is the power of rest. In other words, resting in our faith, knowing that Christ Jesus himself is our peace, that Jesus Christ has reconciled himself to us and he has given us the kingdom. 
It says here, do not, uh, 32nd verse, and we're reading out of uh, Luke, reading out of the 12th chapter, and we're at the 32nd verse now, Luke 12 and 32. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. The kingdom of God is the key. As we grow in greater understanding of the kingdom of God, you know, as we said, as we said before, I don't know if we said it uh, in our broadcast this morning, but I think with the local congregation, we mentioned that about there are some that quote that that text in Matthew six thirty three is seek, seek God. No, it doesn't say it says that the kingdom of God, and so the kingdom of God is our key for access to this rest. Thirty third verse: Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail. Where no thief comes near or no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so my dear brothers and sisters, if the treasure of our heart is the kingdom of God, and we're pursuing the kingdom of God, and we're pursuing what God has established for us in his kingdom, we can be at rest. We know there is provision there. There's healing there. there everything is provided. I was just telling someone just the other day, if you do what the word says do, everything will work out. In other words, our, there are laws established in the kingdom. When you, uh, when you have a kingdom, you have a king. And, you, and the king establishes laws or rules in that kingdom. And as God's children, if we will operate by what the king has told us to do in the kingdom, because in the earth you have the kingdom of darkness, but you also have the kingdom of light. You have the kingdom of Satan, and you have the kingdom of the devil, our kingdom of the devil and the kingdom of God, right? And so we realize that as we've been born again, if we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we've been born into the kingdom of God, right? And we know that the Lord Jesus is our Savior and purchased us and made it available for us to have redemption and salvation so we could transfer out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Now, the kingdom of darkness is very much active in the earth. There's all kind of things the kingdom of darkness puts out through people, right? People manifest the kingdom of darkness. You can watch what they say and watch what they do. If what they say doesn't line up with the word, the word of God, the kingdom, in other words, what the king says in the kingdom, then it is not a part of the kingdom of God. If what they do does not line up with the kingdom, with the, with the, the king of the kingdom teaches us, then it is not a part of the kingdom. It's a part of the kingdom of darkness and will lead to darkness and will ultimately lead to death. Amen. The wages of sin is death. That's what it leads to. And so, but the Heavenly Father, he wants to get in the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They want to get life into us. They want us to have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Let's look over here at Galatians in the third chapter. Let's look at Galatians, the third chapter, and the 23rd verse. Let's look at Galatians and the third chapter and the 23rd verse. Let's look at Galatians, the third chapter and the 23rd verse. Galatians 3 and 23. The book. And it says, before the book, before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until faith that was to come would be revealed. 24th verse. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. 25th verse. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. 26th verse. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have closed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus came down through the lineage of Abraham and gave us access to the kingdom. And if we're born again, then we are a part of the lineage or the descendancy of of Abraham and we have access to everything that God provided to Abraham. Let's look here at the fourth uh, fourth chapter in the first verse. What am I saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. Second verse, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees 
until the time set by his father. So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery under the ele elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, in other words, his children, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. My dear brothers and sisters, our Heavenly Father and has given us the kingdom. The Lord Jesus has ushered it in at the guidance and direction of the Father. And so now we have access to this kingdom. We are heirs. We are children of God. This should provide, we want to rest in this fact that the king, we, we've been born again. We've been, if we've been born again, we've been transferred over into the kingdom of God. Remember, the kingdom of darkness is at work in this earth. Satan will use people to say things to us. Now, God can use people as well to tell, to tell people things that they need to hear that they don't want to hear, right? Just because you don't want to hear something doesn't mean it's the devil, okay? You can hear things that you don't want to hear, but you need to hear. But God will, the devil will, the kingdom of Satan is in this earth as well. And, 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 will, and individuals can be used by him as a detriment to the advancement of the cause of the kingdom of God. But you reside in the kingdom of God. And that king has declared certain statutes. That king has declared certain laws. That king has declared certain guidance and direction. That if we will walk by that guidance and that direction, we can be at rest in our situation, our circumstances. It doesn't matter how many balls we have in the air, how many concerns we have. It doesn't matter what challenges we have going on in our life. The kingdom has everything that we need. If we will operate by the guidance of the kingdom of God, we can be assured that we will be fine. Everything's going to come out all right. You know, feelings are nice, and it's nice to feel God's presence. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, we have legal rights in the kingdom of God. This kingdom has laws. This kingdom has principles. This kingdom has guidance and direction that comes from the king, comes from the Holy Spirit. And if we allow ourselves to be led by the written word, if we allow ourselves to be led by the spoken word, then we can be at rest because we know everything is going to be fine by God's grace. Let's look over here at Ephesians in the second chapter. Let's look at Ephesians and the second chapter and the first verse. Ephesians, the second chapter and the first verse. Ephesians, the second chapter and the first verse. Ephesians, the second chapter and the first verse. And it says, As for you, you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us who lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts, like the rest, you were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. Six verse. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incompar incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. If we have been born again, we have been raised up to sit with Christ in the heavenly realms. My dear, my dear children of God, I want to lay into your hearts that you should be at rest in the kingdom of God. If we are, I'm just ministering this to somebody within the last 48 hours, that, you know, what a wonderful peace we have when we know we're striving to walk out our life with God. We're striving to walk out our life with Christ. We're striving to do what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. That brings us peace 
and we can be at rest in those situations and in those circumstances. The eighth verse, For as by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. In other words, to do what God has called us to do, to be led by the Holy Spirit, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So my dear brothers and sisters, we live in the kingdom of God. And in this kingdom, there are rights, there are laws, there is guidance, there is direction that God gives us. And if we will submit ourselves to these laws, to these guidance, to this direction, we can be at rest, we can be at peace, because we know that it's going to turn right. It doesn't matter what's going on, what the challenge is, what the difficulty is. We use the kingdom of God, what God teaches us about healing. I was just ministering healing to someone the other day. We have healing scriptures out there. In other words, we take, we receive the healing by faith. We take our eyes on those healing scriptures. We speak those healing scriptures over our physical body and we walk it out by faith. Amen. That's how the kingdom of God works. And don't let yourself be fall into the kingdom of darkness and those things that come out of his kingdom where individuals are being used to spread darkness and to bring uh, that which God says is, is sin and to oh, bring it into the earth. Don't, don't, don't align yourselves with that, with those that try to, for those purposes. Don't do that. Align yourself with the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom that you reside in. Now, that's what's going to bring you rest and peace and joy and prosperity. Let's look over here at 1 John, the 5th chapter, and the 14th verse. 1 John, the 5th chapter, and the 14th verse. 1 John, the 5th chapter, and the 14th and the 15th verse. We'll look at both verses here. 1 John uh, 5, uh, 14, 15. It says, This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if he has anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. My dear brothers and sisters, in the kingdom of God, if we ask anything according to God's will, we know that he hears us. And if he, we're talking about, in other words, if we ask according to what the king has said, what is established law, what is established guidance and direction in the kingdom of God, we know we're going to get it. God is the final judge in the kingdom of God. And we're asking for something according to his will, and we're trying to propel his, fulfill his purposes in our life, we're going to get it. That, that, that judge is going to grant us that. Right? God is the, our, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus is our good shepherd. He is our Lord and Savior. God is our judge. And so we realize that as we are pursuing what God, his promises and his will and what he wants for us to do, as we're aligning our spirit with that, as we're aligning our thinking with that, our soul with that, our beliefs with that, are emotionally lined up in that way, we realize that that is going to be fulfilled in our life. We're going to have it. That's the way the kingdom of God works. Whatever God says we can have, we can have. And so we want to align our lives to that. We want to examine our lives. Our, is our life reflecting what God says it could be? should we should do you know we have a call right now we put out a call in our ministry to pray for the nation you know that will bring blessing to us as we sow a seed of prayer for our nation it will not only be a blessing for this nation but it will be a blessing for us what we sow into is what we're going to receive out of if we sow into wickedness if we sow into sin we'll receive that ourselves and into our family lives and communities lives but if we sow into righteousness then we'll receive the same in our and we'll receive the same uh in our in our lives let's look over here at mark and the sixth chapter let's look at mark and the sixth chapter and we're going to look at the first verse here mark the sixth chapter and the first verse our message this morning is the power of rest Part one. This is going to be a multi-part series. And it's all about the kingdom of God. Our realization that we live in the kingdom of God. We've got to remember now, in the earth, the kingdom of darkness does exist. Satan will give people things to say and to do and groups and bodies to do. 
But we as God's children, we're in the kingdom of God. We don't align ourselves with what the kingdom of darkness says. We align ourselves with what the king says about the kingdom. And there are certain laws and there are certain, there are certain principles. There are certain uh, uh, guidance and direction that's given this kingdom. As we will follow that direction, we will experience the blessing connected with it. So let's look at, we're, we're looking here at, uh, at uh, Mark, the sixth chapter and the, sixth, and the first verse. Mark 6 and 1 says, Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Third verse, isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son? And the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. You know, so many times, we have to, as their brothers and sisters, we have to be careful about becoming familiar with the what the kingdom says. And we become so familiar with it that we take it for granted or that we, maybe we've heard something from the kingdom of darkness and we let that override what the kingdom of God says. We've got to be careful that we don't let familiarity take the joy and the priority of what God says in the kingdom away from us. Let's go on here to the fourth verse. And Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his relatives and his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Let me read that again. It says he could do any miracles there. So, you know, I, I would sometimes ask the local congregation, is there anything that Jesus can't do? And yes, he can be stopped from doing things. God can be stopped from doing things. Why? Because we don't believe it. If we don't re believe it, if we don't receive what God has done, then he can't, he can't operate there. He says what? He says he was amazed at their lack of faith. In other words, a prophet is with honor except in his own home, among his relatives and his own home. He cannot do, he could not do any miracles except lay hands on a few sick people and heal them. Why? Because they didn't have faith. My dear brothers and sisters, faith We've been born into the kingdom of God, so we had to have faith to get there, right? We had to have faith in Jesus' sacrifice and redemption that he's brought on Calvary. But when we, as we're in the kingdom, we have to have faith in what he says. We have to have faith in what the king's laws are. We have, in the, in, we have to have faith in, in what the king, how he guides us and directs us. We have faith in the direction that is provided, in the wisdom that is provided. We have to have faith in that, and that is what will give us rest. It will give us peace and it will give us rest because we're sure we are his we are our heavenly father's child and we are a, we are a part of the kingdom of god and god loves us and he wants you to prosper he wants you to be at peace he wants you to be at joy he wants you to experience life abundantly amen you know his promises give us a promise of healing a promise of restoration a, his word gives us a promise of financial increase and so much more. Uh, you know, we don't, you know, God will bring us through hardships. He'll give, bring us through challenges and difficulty. But God has much more for you than that. He doesn't want to just bring you through hardships and challenges and difficulties. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be prospered. He wants you to be blessed in every area of your life. He wants you to be blessed spiritually. He wants you to be blessed uh, in your soul. In other words, the way you think the way you believe, the way you feel. He wants you to be blessed in your physical body. He wants you to be blessed in your relationships. He wants you to be blessed financially in every every area. Let's look over here at 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and the 13th verse. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and the 13th verse. Let's look at 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and the 13th verse. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. You know, any challenge or difficulty you have is common to mankind, common to the world, right? Uh, Satan is the God of this world. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. In other words, as we go through challenges and difficulties in the kingdom of God, if we will pray and connect ourselves with God and walk out our lives as the kingdom of God would have us do it, as the king has 
told us to do, there's going to be a way of escape out of that situation, out of that, out of that trial that has come up in your life. Let's look over here at Romans, the 10th chapter, and the 10th verse. Romans, the 10th chapter, and the 10th verse. Romans 10 and 10. And it says, For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Just as we receive our salvation, is we have to have faith for this other grace that's in the kingdom. In other words, the kingdom of God, there's power, there's peace, there's rest, but we have to believe it in our hearts, and we have to renew our minds to it and walk that out in our lives. I'm going to, I'm going to close, say, uh, share one more verse here, and then we're going to close on this verse here. Matthew 18 and 18. Matthew 18 and 18. It says, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So in other words, what I'm saying is, in the kingdom of God, we live here. If we will bind our faith, right, to what the kingdom of God says and build our faith on that, put that in our mouth, put that in our eyes, keep ourselves focused on it, allow our life to be transferred to reflect that life of the kingdom, we will experience it. And we can be at rest in the kingdom. We don't have to be anxious or uptight or uh, distraught or have high anxiety over things. God will provide. And he will give us the guidance that we need and the direction. But we have to follow that soft, gentle voice that when he speaks to us and when he shares with us and gives us a word, and it may be opposite of what we think, it can be that way with God, uh, it will work out wonderfully. It will work out beautifully. It'll be, you'll be at rest. You can be at rest. You can be at peace knowing that God's got it and he's going to bring about a victory, a supernatural increase in your lives. Amen.